In this video, we will focus on the ionization of water and how certain molecules known as acids and bases affect the ratio of hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions in the water. In a glass of liquid water, for example drinking water, the molecules of H2O can and will most likely form hydrogen bonds with one another. This is a stable configuration for these molecules. On occasion, however, water ions can form where the hydrogen from one water molecule leaves and either remains free in solution or joins another water molecule. This event is rare and it is reversible and it is not as stable as two separate intact water molecules. So for every 10 million molecules of water in a typical glass of drinking water only one pair will be ionized. This ionization event that occurs in water can be measured using the pH scale. The pH scale simply tells you what ratio of free hydrogen ions are found in a certain water for solution. Some molecules when added to water can shift the amount and the ratio of hydrogen and hydroxyl ions that are found in the water. In plain water both of these ions are present in very small and balanced amounts both at about one in every ten million. Acids are molecules which add more hydrogen ions or shift the ratio so hydrogen ions are present at a level greater than one in every 10 million. These acids also would lead to less hydroxyl ions by about an equivalent amount. Bases or basic molecules do the opposite. They lower the amount of hydrogen ions and increase the presence of hydroxyls. Some acids and bases are encountered in everyday situations. These include soft drinks and coffee which are more acidic than pure water, and ammonia and bleach, which are basic. Instead of expressing hydrogen ion concentrations as 1 in 10 million, or in other terms, 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, the negative exponent of this figure is taken and used. This number is the pH. A larger pH like pH 9, means that there are 1 times 10 to the negative 9, or 1 in a billion, hydrogen ions in the solution. A smaller pH, like pH 3, means that there are 1 times 10 to the negative 3, or 1 in a thousand, hydrogen ions in the solution. You could see that decreasing the pH means an increased amount of hydrogen ions increases or decreases in the concentration of hydrogen ions is usually matched by the reverse change in the concentration of hydroxyl or OH ions. The pH of a solution is very important in biology. Many of our cells and many other molecules in our body only work correctly in a certain pH range. In fact, even small increases or decreases in the pH of our blood can be harmful. Fortunately, our body has compounds known as buffers that help stabilize the pH of a solution. Buffers are molecules that can act as a weak acid or base, and they could reversibly donate or accept a hydrogen ion. One example found in our own blood is carbonic acid. If the pH of our blood starts to rise, in other words, the hydrogen ion concentration begins to drop, carbonic acid can convert to a bicarbonate ion and donate a hydrogen ion. This donated hydrogen ion will help keep the pH at the correct level. 
In contrast, as the pH drops or the hydrogen ion levels increase, bicarbonate in the blood will soak up the extra hydrogen ions and become carbonic acid, which can also convert to water and carbon dioxide. In the face of a change in pH or of another acid or base being added to a solution, a buffer can slow the increase or decrease of pH. For example, starting on the left of this graph at pH 2.5, addition of a buffer causes a linear increase in pH. At a certain range, shown here as a tan bar, a buffer acts to donate extra hydrogen ions every time more base is added. Therefore, it takes a lot more base to increase the pH by a substantial amount while you are in the buffering range. As an example, let's look at another buffer, in this case the amino acid glycine. This simple molecule has the ability to act as a buffer in more than one way. The nitrogen containing amine group as well as the hydroxyl containing carboxyl group both have buffer ability. Let's see how glycine acts as a buffer by starting from a neutral pH and moving in either direction. Remember, decreasing the pH means an increase in the concentration of hydrogen ions. At a certain point, glycine balances further increases in the level of free hydrogen ions by accepting them, accepting them onto the amine group. Increases in pH, or decreases in the amount of hydrogen ions, have the opposite effect. At a certain point, the carboxyl group will donate a hydrogen ion and help keep the pH at a certain level. If you started what was essentially plain water and glycine, and added either a strong acid like hydrogen chloride or a strong base like sodium hydroxide, you would see the following trends. There would be two points in which the pH of the solution seems to plateau and resist changes despite addition of more acid or base. This, these are the ranges in which the different parts of glycine are acting like a buffer. Many different molecules can serve as buffers, and some buffer at multiple pHs, as glycine does. The middle of the range in which a molecule serves as a buffer, also known as the pKa of that molecule, differs depending on the molecule's structure. The more extreme the pKa, or the further the pKa is from 7, the more acidic or basic the solution must become before the buffer will help resist further changes. This number also reflects how strongly the molecule holds on to these extra hydrogen ions, with a more extreme number representing a stronger hold on the ion. 